wow, what a day. Uh, already, already some debacles uh, getting this stream ready. Uh, oh, yes, the other day we had um, we had a debacle with, uh, what was it? Uh, the long shots, there we go, <laughs> the morning. Uh, so the long shots had a sweet stream with uh, the wolf pack. Me and Jeremy were going to talk to him and then StreamYard uh, had like extra traffic or something. So that didn't work out. Uh, we recorded it and then <laughs> I couldn't like get it off StreamYard for some reason. Like I was trying to figure out maybe it was like a not enough space or something on my computer. I don't know how it doesn't make any sense because I've got plenty of space. So there was like some problems getting it off and I still haven't uploaded it. I'm going to figure that out today. That is, uh, either way, StreamYard has been, uh, I don't know, a pain. Just now when I was trying to go live, it took literally like a minute and a half for it to like activate. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to be uh, <laughs> continuing this, um, this service. I will be using it free uh, and or looking up new ways to get the stream out. Um, so today uh, we're going to do a couple different things, but uh, first thing is want to bring up uh, a couple cool projects that I came across. Uh, one we talked about before, but I have not been able to back, which is Perfect 10. We had uh, Dave Brink on. I mentioned uh, a bunch of books that I wanted to back a while ago, and uh, yeah, it just didn't uh, didn't work out where I mentioned Perfect Ten in that list, so I feel bad about it because um, Dave's got some a good series going, and I will be back in it. I just forgot to mention in in a recent tweet, so I want to bring up Perfect Ten. Uh, let's just see where he's at. Let's just bring up the the window and so, so we'll see where he's at. Because, um, like I said, book book deserves it. <clears throat> so. Share ski. All right, so uh, Perfect Ten, issue three, and Cross Worlds. Uh, but yeah, it looks like he's doing incredible because 30 days left to go and he's uh, over 10K. That is awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, who's in the chat? <laughs> I, I hear I hear things in the chat. They're going off. Um, uh, the little notifications. We got Collision Bomb says, good, good morning, Joe. Good morning, Collision Bomb. Good to see you in the chat. And um, Chris Fisk is here, says, hey, Joe. Good to see you too, dude. I I, um, I feel like I don't get around. I know I go check out other streams, but I never have enough time to like just really have a good chat, you know, interaction with a lot of people. And I know you guys are out there. So I miss miss hanging in the chat with you guys. Uh, it's 24 Eyes is here. Hello, 24 Eyes. Uh, you're the bomb. You got a cool show. Do that, that pop culture show you got. I forget what it's called. Uh, but really cool, really cool stuff. And I just dig the way it's, uh, kind of formatted. Um, come on, Alice, go away. Uh, so perfect 10, go check it out. I said, I missed posting about it for in my little, um, my tweet. And it's a, all I can say is like the, the first two books were, Awesome. The first book, especially, is a great pilot, great number one, and uh, so yeah, worth your worth your time. Go check that out. Also, uh, saw this. Somebody posted this. Maybe I don't know. One of the Aussies probably posted this, uh, but this is <clears throat> a cool uh, kind of horror take on cyberpunk, and uh, you know, you know, that's my realm. My realm, and uh, will probably definitely be talking about this. Maybe I will be putting this uh, project, you know, uh, on the schedule to get them on and talk about it. So it's, it seems like it's pretty, just by the color scheme, very, got the standard cyberpunk color scheme. Uh, vibrant neon color palette. Bam. It's got, and I'm in because it's just, looks like it's very much inspired by Dead Space. I feel like this is somebody that was like, uh, in love with Dead Space, which is is me as well. Um, Dead Space is not in my top ten, but it's like maybe it should be because I, I adore the game. Uh, I don't really like horror games, but I like creepy kind of stuff, and um, I know that's kind of contradictory. But 
Uh, it looks like it's going to be awesome. Like a mix of Cyberpunk plus, you know, something like Dead Space. It seems cool. And uh, it looks like he's doing an NFT, which which is, you don't see that very often. <clears throat> not in our realm. Not in our uh, realm. <laughs> not in our world. So, yeah. Fractured Echo is what it's called. I will be... Uh, Maybe we'll watch the video later on if we got a second uh, for the for the trailer. But this does look cool. I will be signing up because, obviously, Cyberpunk looks like Dead Space. I'm in. Good stuff. <clears throat> so, yeah, this morning, if I clear my throat a lot, it's like mostly, uh, usually if I'm drinking the day before um, and talking to people, socializing, I, I lose my voice quick. And it usually is just like a raspy kind of continuation of that the next day. Um, but that's what I'm dealing with. Hopefully it's not anything other than that. Cause I never know. It can, it could be, could be a starting of a sickness or just me yelling for hours the day before. Um, cause that's how I talk. You know, I, I get ramped up and then I start yelling at people. Um, so let's look at what we're going to do today. Uh, basically I wanted to talk about covers cause I'm working on a cover and when you work on something, you just like sparks all these ideas and sparks the, like the, I don't know, the, the essence, like what makes, uh, it all distilled into one thing. Frequency girls here says, hi, hi. Um, good to have you on board. Uh, so yeah, uh, morning is, is rough. So, um, I kind of like it because it's kind of like navigating my my like stillborn mind <laughs> is not born yet of the of the day, and I am trying to get myself through <laughs> the first part of the stream. Usually, I get going. Um, anyway, the covers that I'm working on right now, I, I I usually do tons of variation, and when I give people options for their cover, usually there'll be one of each type. Like um, there'll be the type that. Number one, when you do a cover for somebody, you give them what they want. Number one is you give them what you want. Like we give them literally the description. You just do it like they want. And then you make a couple variations of that. And then you start branching off. And I usually do one of each kind of um, genre of cover, if you will. So I do like a uh, one that's like a dude just running at you, you know, <laughs> attacking, you know, an action cover the standard image comics action cover, you know, and that usually goes off well. Um, but depending on the creator who's commissioning you to do the cover, um, obviously it's not, this doesn't apply if it's your book because you can pick whatever you want, but uh, there's plenty of other options. One that I really like is an environmental one that like, um, it's a combination of mystery and cool art which tends to be more detail oriented because if you do an environment that is just kind of plain and maybe not so much to it, there's not enough intrigue there. So yeah, that's how it goes. Um, let's see. We got some new peeps. B Rose. What's up B Rose morning. Chris Fisk, 24 eyes. Yes. Saying hello to everybody. What's up. Oh, missed the first one. Hail. And, uh, Let's see here, 24 eyes, he was here. Man to be, just a bra. <laughs> uh, I'm extra supportive, yes. I, if you know me, I, I support all uh, people, including myself, and <clears throat> just a bra. And sometimes I, uh, so, well, I, I don't know, I'm not always supportive. So maybe when I'm just a bra, I'm, I'm extra supportive. Uh, Chris Fisk, uh, Joe is using a man's ear, yes. There's, there's such a thing. Um, you know, I, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what level of, of extra chest fat will it take before you have to go that route. Um, I feel like if you're a super bodybuilder and then you stop working out, like it can easily go down that road, especially if you're like abusing, you know, her, uh, hormone kind of enhancing stuff. Uh, heck yeah. Oh yeah. The tiara bro is is it's funny i can't like i almost can't take them seriously i mean i don't know when you can take Vero seriously but um uh, especially with the tiara uh anyway sidetracked thanks for having everybody uh thank you all for coming uh so 
Star Circuit, I have an update for, um, and mostly feel like maybe I'll save this for the end. I don't know. I don't know what you guys are here for. If you'd rather me get into the cover stuff, or if you want me to talk Star Circuit, not sure uh, uh, what the appeal is. You know, the priority for me, the cover is cool because I can bring that up right now. That's actually maybe a good way to start. If I bring that up, then you guys can be like, oh, let's see what we can talk about when we're talking about covers. Uh, otherwise, we can move and and maybe discuss a little bit of the updates for Star Circuit. Okay. Come on, iPad. Work with me, bro. All right. So, uh, I posted the picture of this on YouTube, I think, as a post. <clears throat> so, let's uh, zoom in. Oh, it's not the button. Okay. It's got a good... All right, so this is where I'm at. So, this is the... This is the cover for the side book I've been doing, Left Hand Free. Um, and damn, I think it's going to work really well. I think this is like one of the better compositions I've come up with for a cover because like not only does... I, I really like when covers just have good compositions, but this one especially is like freaking one that incorporates the title. And, and, and like the composition just is this perfect kind of nice oval... Um, Kind of framing of the character and all the other characters. It's, I think this this is one of the more I don't know like uh, balanced and I think I don't know if useful is the right word, but functional. You know, functional and cool. I can see this cover being one of the best I draw. So hopefully that's the way it goes. Um, this has got like a really up close and personal thing happening. Uh, Amanda B. <laughs> Did you hear about the giveaway contest on more crackheads channel? Original Fraggle Works. <clears throat> I did not hear about that. Um, I always ch uh, catch some of Lord Crackhead's streams, and they're usually pretty fun. They get all over the place, so I, I, I miss I miss things. Uh, the cover for the first Star Circuit, Two Faces is epic. That spot UV is insane. Thank you. Um, I feel like I don't know what I consider that style. My My Star Circuit cover is kind of... It's like a mix between like a mysterious type. It's a very simple cover. Maybe it's, that's under the simple uh, route. But uh, doing a portrait, I'm, I'm a big fan of just having the portrait sell itself, you know, and as long as you do the, the emotion and the um, intrigue of the character, everything should play into that. And um, it works sometimes. And I think, I think I like, I like how it came out. I did that cover twice, by the way, Chris. I did it once and it didn't turn out good and I did it again. And it's one of those examples of, you know, don't give up on the idea, kind of. <clears throat> okay. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah, the hand will be cool. I got so much reference of myself doing doing this. I'm like trying to get this hand. This, this is one of the harder, like, uh, hand positions in perspective because um, it can easily get funky and in my in my rough drawing here it is a little funky but you get the idea enough where you know the circular nature of the cover where the it, it leads your eye around so hopefully the first read on this cover is going to be right in the big in the middle his face the fireball and then the hand leads you around to see all the characters <clears throat> we also have you know there's subtle things like the guys on the left are kind of more the bad guys ish ish and the guys on the right are the good guys. And I purposely have them facing right because right usually means forward in, in storytelling. So you have the good guys facing right. That's going to lead you to believe that they're looking forward. They're, they're in the right path. Speaking of the right path, Vera Via Studios. I don't know if you see my logo in the top right there. Um, but that's what that means. My, my logo, my studio name is literally Latin for the, the true path. The right path and uh and so i don't know for me that's like it, it incorporates everything i do you know whether it be there's also a nice pun where it also means the the true path as far as like the racing line which star circuit is all about racing so it's like this little pun about finding the racing line if you've ever played mario kart or any kind of you know racing game or something including uh, a track there is a line which like you have to Hit, hit the corners at the optimum like angle and uh, 
what they call the apex pretty much like if there's a if there's a u-shape curve you want to hit it at the the peak of the curve and that's how you get the the perfect turn anyway that's all nonsense kind of it doesn't relate to covers but the um <clears throat> what we have here is a pretty cool um version of a cover and i, I dig it let's see that samurai's pc was showing us that was awesome um i have to go back and watch it because i missed that damn Damn, I was at a nephew's birthday party yesterday, so we were we were dead afterwards. <clears throat> okay, um, let's see here. So explain this cover. I could show you guys the other variants. I don't, I don't think it's gonna breach anything because we may use it. But here, let's let's just show my process because it's it's probably useful. So this is what I I turned into. So you can kind of see what I was talking about before. Um, this is really not giving anything away, obviously, but it just shows my process. So let's look at, this is pretty much the cover that the, the creator wanted. This is, uh, what would say like line by line, this is what he requested. And so that's what I did. And I think it's got a cool, it's got a cool feel. It's got a very movie poster feel and not necessarily a comic book feel. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I don't know. I, I think it would work as a poster, as a print. Uh, maybe not as the cover as much. But I do like there's a the city in the back left. And you still get all the elements that we were talking about before in there. And uh, it would work. Um, there's another variation. This is like kind of like, I'd say like the most weeber. <laughs> it's like a, a weeb cover, I would say. Something like it. It's like, a, you know... Um, it's just something you would see in like an anime cover or a, a more manga e style cover. It's very, you know, come with me if you want to live kind of uh, hand welcoming with a flame up front. Um, I don't like it because we're, we're trying to do this motif where the mask on this kid is split. And when you turn the head, it doesn't work as well. Like it, it especially that way, when you see more of the mask and not that, I don't, I don't think it works. Um, so even though I like the pose, I would have to figure out what to do with that. Um, you know what I mean? Um, Amanda B says, I still like the hand, but the other one is more engaging to my eyes. Yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, I, and I agree. Uh, the circle feel is great. Um, I, you know, it's all about composition. This one has like a nice, like slopey composition. Let's go back to a couple other ones. This one is essentially the same of a lot of it, but I wanted to do, I probably could have finessed this one better, but the idea is to have the negative space of the hand silhouette, you know, kind of be like this extra level of intrigue. You know what I mean? Like you, you see the characters and then you'd be like, oh wait, that's the shape of a hand. It's called the left hand free. You'd be like, oh, that's a unique kind of cool thing happening. <clears throat> uh, and then what we have is the one we went with. Um, and I, I thought it was the, the closest to a uh, seller. I would say this is like one that's gonna sell the most. So obviously I think this is why the reason we went with this one. And this may be the one that I would have picked if it was my book. <coughs> Excuse me. And the reason why I would go with this one is because the intrigue of it, it's it's so weird to see just a hand with a with a flame like kinda and I would I would have to really render those flames and, and hand really well. It would have to be the, the best hand in flames you've ever seen in your life. Um, but if you did it well, the negative space and everything would work with it. Um, so, uh, that's, that's why we didn't go with this one. This would probably would be one of the best variant covers he could go with because it's so different than anything else you're going to see. Uh, and if you're a fan of the, what the book's going to be, you're going to be like, I want both of those. Cause there's, there's nothing even remotely, uh, kind of close uh, about them so yeah so Amanda B says uh, still liking the circle feel same same we're all here uh, I think we all would agree Chris uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. yes I would agree as well with this <clears throat> dude original art is my favorite check out this check out this original art back here I, I do love having it, it in my office because I I remember looking at it and sometimes I have my own work on the wall <clears throat> but most times I like other people 
of other people's work on the wall because uh, I don't know. It's not nothing egotistical about it, but it's mostly like I see their work. I can see where I pull from them and then I can get it from the source instead of me having my own work on the wall. And it's almost like if you have your own work on the wall, you end up looking like at it for remembering that you could do that kind of level of work before or previously. All right, Frequency Girl says, I do like the pose, uh, but I agree, the split on the mask doesn't read. Absolutely. I like that negative hand one. Yeah, it's it's one of my, I don't know, uh, something about <clears throat> something about the mysterious ones are the ones that I like to go for. And then lastly, this is like one that I think would work because I turned the head the other way and the mask is now the opposite way. It would be cool to see the split from that angle. And it's got a, a nice composition as far as like the arm and the hand. And then your eye kind of sees, <clears throat> maybe I can draw on it. And then your, your, your eye will go down here and then loop back up and around. <clears throat> so I thought it was cool for that reason. Um, I don't know if the title works there, but like this would be like first read, second read, and then loop around. Um, which I think would work perfectly, but it just didn't turn out to be the one that they like, but I kind of like this one. I, it's one of my, maybe my third favorite. Let's see. Yeah. The negative hand reminds me of a technique used on first Friday the 13th movie poster. Ooh, maybe we can look that up. Let me look on the, let me look, maybe open the tab here and look and see, <clears throat> see what you mean. I think I remember it's just the, the knife, right? It's just the knife. Hmm. Again, apologize because my voice is going. Maybe I got bronchitis or something. Maybe I shouldn't be talking. Oh, so yeah, this is the guy in the knife, right? F one figure in the knife, maybe. I don't know. I think that's the one I'm thinking of anyway. Hmm. Which one are you talking about, Chris? There's so many of them. The one I'm thinking of is... The one where the hand is like down and just has the knife. And that's all you see. That in the house in the background, probably. Yeah, I, I, I found one that I think is the one we're talking, what you all are talking about. Yeah, his body uh, on the side and the holding the knife. Yeah, exactly. I think we all get it. I don't think I have to bring it up. So, um, very cool stuff. Frog G is here throwing out Infinitail, The War of the Trees. Uh, I read it. I really digged uh, the intro. It's hard to do an intro, especially for a spanning fantastical world. I think he did the best of both worlds. We get you get this lore kind of feeling of like, oh, uh, it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys have seen Elden Ring and all the hype around that kind of crazy lore-ish type of game. But uh, it's like that. That's the same feeling you got. Like it's just... Something really big happening, except that for a story to pull you in, you got to get kind of the micro. You see the macro, but you, know, you need to like have the story focus around the micro character development. And I think he does both. So <clears throat> cool stuff. Oh, show. Silhouette of the dude uh, is the night scene. Yes. Yes. Um, there's two of them, I believe, we're talking about. For Friday the 13th. All right, so here, let's, um, so you've seen them all. These are how we did it. Um, to me, I think we chose the correctly <clears throat> and went with the, the right the right one because I feel like the hand, the, the hand with the flame like this looks, I think it's got enough intrigue, but it's not going to be the one that hits the most readers. Like most people won't like that. Um, maybe down the road, if you have like a big name, I guess I'm talking to the third person. If I eventually have a big, big enough name, like having a cover like that be the main cover would be appealing enough because you're like, oh, he's just known for that stuff. Um, <clears throat> so maybe down the road that would work. Uh, so, but uh, Frog G, hell yeah, man, thank you. Uh, got to those, got to dingle the bells, <laughs> dingle those bells. Remind yourself to come and hang with me on Sundays. There's not many people out there hanging on a Sunday morning, so come hang. Talk to me, uh, and you know, we'll 
we'll always have a good enough time because you gotta have the coffee, bro. That's that's what it's all about. I uh, I gotta caffeinate myself for the times ahead, and that's what we do. Oh no, moving around my window and stuff. That's what happens when I use my finger and not the pen. I, like I'm not accurate enough. Okay, so let's drop the opacity, and this is what I started doing. I immediately started working with the hand because I'm like, if the thing doesn't work without the hand working. So here I'm trying to finesse style and and obviously stuff going back in, into space for shortening. So I think the finger is starting to get right. Um, the fingers in the back, maybe the, the back one is not big enough or like wide enough. Might need a little bit more. Oop, just got to get the right layer. Probably needs a little more like that, the more I look at it. We'll see. We'll see if I keep it like that. But everything needs to be consistent, you know. And uh, that's the goal for the most part with getting like this in-between stage of drawing. Like you have the concept. You have generally where things should go. Now you got to like break it down and actually put volume to things and make sure, you know, before you start really penciling, you have what needs to be there. Some insane people like Fraga <laughs> can just go. He's been doing storyboards and like on the site drawing and, and um, this thing for so many more years than most of us that he can just roll. He's, he's he Kim John G's it, which uh, I got a hot take on Kim John G. I really like Kim John G. Is that you I, I don't know. Um, either way, I have a hot take for him because I that style of drawing I do like where it's. You don't have an underdrawing, but it never comes out as polished and cool as if you do have an underdrawing. So I have a hot take there. A lot of people don't agree with that, but I do. I I think if Kim Jong Gi did one with an underdrawing, his stuff would turn out better. I personally, that's what I would think. And same thing when Fraga does it. Fraga does really good on the spot stuff, but I'm sure when he plans out his shots, they just turn out better. I don't. I get the whole point to put out more work, but. I don't know. I think you you do need some underdrawing, no matter how rough. At least go the EVS route and sketch some colored pencil underneath or whatever you use as blue line. <clears throat> you know. So everything's here. I'm not even worried about um, the hand. I'm I'm not really worried about because I have a lot of reference, and I'm not really worried about the characters either because they're. Uh, I think like what's here is. I wouldn't say perfect or anything. It's just the energy is there and that's what you want to get that's why this cover worked just because like the energy is there i know what i need to do to make it work there's no guesswork in my mind uh, to you guys it might seem a little weird because not everything's fleshed out but um for example we can probably hmm let's see here i think we want to try maybe we'll work with I have a lot of weird, goofy references on my left here, or your right, but uh, I kind of want to mess with this guy's. This is his brother over here, and I want to do his kind of face because it's it's pretty intriguing because I like that three-quarter. My favorite style of face is when you draw one that's almost profile. Like that's, I've always, I not always said it, but one where you have, <clears throat> you have your cutout, your nose is, pretty much covering the eye, but you can just barely see the eyelashes on the other side. See what I mean? Like it's got this natural, like that's the only way I would say draw a profile, unless you really want to have this flat kind of look, maybe that anime approach. <clears throat> Dude, uh, I'm going to start this head. And in the meantime, I will also talk star circuit because frog G is bringing it up. Um, I'm working on star circuit too. I had to go back and redo uh, a placement of a scene, and I think I got it. What I call uh, what I call Star Circuit Two is become huge. It's like it's almost like I needed to add more to flesh out the characters sooner. I I was waiting for like all this junk, not junk, all the meat to be in Act Two, and instead I'm like I need to intrigue you earlier in Act One to make sure you stick around for act two. So that's what happened. So now Star Circuit 2 is like 90 pages. I, I, I had to throw it in there. You got a solid, solid side story with Hip. 
you get a solid side story um, with um, Menno, which is the you know his brother. He's got his own kind of thing that's happening to him, uh, and then obviously Atlas and what happened to him at the end of Star Circuit One. That all obviously gets fleshed out, answered. You know, you learn what's going on, and on top of that, just like you're going to, you're going to new places, places that you didn't think were really. I mean, I don't know how much of the world I showed you in one, because in my mind, I, I have this big map of the world, but you don't really get to see tons of, sh of stuff in in one. But in two, you get to you get to see these new places. It's almost it's almost like this. Um, it's almost like you going uh, in between or like this side, like you going on a vacation. Like you're usually in this town, in the city, and this is where we show you mostly, but we're going to take this little detour and you're going to see like other pieces of this world. Um, so really cool stuff. Uh, FG over here is saying uh, we're fans of the KJG cover over here on the frequency. <clears throat> nice. Well, um, I'm not sure exactly which one you're talking about. Let me see. And with that link, time to hop off to bed. Dude, I forget you're over there across the seas. Good night, my friend. Um, have a good time. Uh, Frequency Girl, tell me which cover specifically we're talking about with that one. Let me know. Okay. Um, anyway, this is proof. This is, uh, this is Star Circuit 2. So a page for each one. I just do a thumbnail on each page and that's, so that's your thickness, kind of. That's your Star Circuit 2 thumbnails. Um, so, um, that's where we're headed. It's going to be a fun-ass time. I, I'm stoked to get layouts going. Layouts will start uh, eminently. Is that the right phrasing with that word? Hopefully. Okay, so... I want to do a little bit on the cover because that's what we're talking about. And I call this thing a draw stream. It's really, <laughs> it's really not a draw stream. It's mostly talk about drawing stream. I need to come up with a new, a new name. Uh, even Nefarious didn't think Cup of Joe was a great title. Uh, he said like Cappuccino with Catapano or something. something like, I thought that was like way too long. Way too many syllables for a, a title. Hmm. Oh, not the cover. Ah, uh, just just an insane. Yeah, okay. Just the uh, just uh, in general, he's just an insane guy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Kim Jong Gi over here. Um, for me, I really enjoy enjoy his work. I really like Carl Kershaw, who is like kind of the similar style guy who draws on the spot. But I have his sketchbook. I have his paintings. Actually, I have one right here. <clears throat> Drop those thumbnails. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, one of Carl's prints. Let's bring this, let's make this large, large solo. All right, let's check this out. This is a print I got a long time ago and I got a sketchbook with it. It was just like a deal where he had like a sketchbook plus a print, but he's an insane artist and he does literally kind of the same kind of thing that Kim John Gee does, which is, uh, you know, draws on the spot, very just talented. Um, kind of guy. And uh, yeah, this will be going on the wall. Maybe not here, but probably in the gallery wall over there. This is just, um, this is just great. I, I, I enjoy this. This is, this, this is one of those like master color like palettes. <laughs> it's like, this is used in the rule of thirds with color on some insane level. Okay, all right. So, loving it, loving it. That's a uh, yeah. I agree. It, I I saw that one. I was. I want that one huge. I want that thing like seventy by sixty in my living room. <clears throat> Maybe one day, you know, higher. So, let's see here. Wonder what we could do. I do want to work on this guy's face. Let's try that a little bit. Um, so the first thing I kind of do when I have stuff like this, probably separate each character out in a different layer and I'll just use quick 
letters to tell who's who. I know I know their names, so I'm like, I'll just use the first letter of their names. Oh, you can't see what I'm talking about. Damn it. Damn it, bro. Uh, okay, so yeah, I just named them D and G because it's their names. Dante is the main guy if you're here. So we're going to work on G, the G man. <clears throat> man. Uh, the more I talk, the more I'm like, this is not, <laughs> this is not feeling great. Maybe I should slow my roll. All right. Um, I also like to use different colors because when I print it out and, and do the next step on paper, sometimes I go right on top of like an overlay and having a different color underneath kind of instantly lets me know like all the details that I'll eventually have. There might be a lot of like hair follicles and stuff over here and I'll immediately know that's part of this character, not the main character, if you know what I mean. So that's why I do it this way. Okay, let's get in here. So right now I don't have him at my favorite position. You can see his center line is a little bit more toward us, which I think is what we need. I don't think he needs to be facing totally the other way. Um, but I like working with center lines first because they're tough. Like I feel like the only way you keep consistency between characters is if you lock down your center line. Um, so this little line here, if you know how to draw faces or kind of studied a little bit of that, there's what they call the keystone, which is the uh, the brow. And then from here, the, the, the eye socket will be over here. I'm not really sure how big to make them, kind of just messing around. But <clears throat> with this angle, you'll see like something like this, where you're going to get a good chunk of his skull. Um, it maybe wouldn't go that low because we're looking up at him as well. So... But this is what you have to do. This is like the the work. This is what we call the work in, in my world. Because I'm not like a super insane, I know where everything is yet in my mind, artist. Um, I, Jeremy's much more into that realm of just able to pull that off, you know. Um, for me, I don't visualize everything as clearly. But in some ways, that's good because I feel like uh, I feel like working it out on paper is always better even though it's not quicker. And I guess the word better is debatable because if you're working quicker, maybe that is better because you're going to get more work done. Hmm. So um, the best part of digital is this, guys, right here. I noticed that oh, maybe the socket is way too wide for what it should be. And we're going to move it. Move it in a little bit. Kind of give it a little more rounded of a head. Not too much, just like that. All right, so now I'm feeling now I'm feeling like Bob Ross, guys. Welcome to Bob Ross. Now I don't know if you ever seen this before when people draw like circles as the forehead. That's a Riley rhythms method. That's like a it's a weird method. Personally, personally, I find that to be kind of weird. Uh, the rhythms are kind of this this way to draw all these lines connecting. Like you pretty much outline all the muscle. Uh, the muscles of the face almost and then you find the rhythms between them so like if you draw a perfect circle in perspective on the forehead going down to the brow it shows you where your eyeball should be it's like stuff like that you're gonna like find things easy um, but I do like this one I like this rhythm where it finds your it finds your ear and your and your and your jaw or your not your jaw but your I don't even what you call that it's a line from chin up to ear. It's this like slope from over here. It's like, I can't do it looking at the camera, but it uh, curves down. Anyway. Cool. Um, let me take this off so I can, I think he's got like a concerned slash determined kind of expression. I don't really know just yet. I'll have to finesse that for sure. Hmm. And this is where I need to go look at um, his headshot reference, which I have on another screen. 
this is needed because his face, I think, is like, even though he's the older brother in this story, his face is more chubby. <laughs> uh, maybe that's subconsciously me because my brothers are a little more, I think I have the most rounded face. And so maybe I'm pulling that because I'm not the oldest, but I have a more rounded face. So maybe I'm drawing from myself. <clears throat> um, here, so yeah, he's got like still like a good a good chin down here. So we don't want to we don't want to lose his chin, but definitely want to make sure he gets his cheek in here. And this will have to be finessed because it's just the way it goes. But yeah, having this little building your face like architecture, like knowing the planes of the face is key because without them, you like end up forgetting <clears throat> where things are. Like you, or maybe you just like go out of the box a little too far or something. All right, so from here, if the nose is around here at the base, which is probably right. Well, let's look at it. Let's, let's break it down this way. Uh, top of the head looks like it's up here. And then this thing comes down. If we put a little rectangle down here, it looks like we can divide this thing up into thirds real easy. However, the perspective is where this is. This gets tricky. When you do an upshot like this, the bottom half of the third of the face should be bigger. Um, if you, I tilt my head back from here to here is the most and then a little smaller and then a little smaller. And that's kind of, this is not as dramatic, but um, it should be, if we do thirds, it should be, let's see. I think we're pretty close, actually. It's tough, depending where the top of the head, I really make it. I think this is pretty close. So I think just naturally, I think a lot of what you do with art kind of comes out naturally. But in this case, I, I found it close to what it should be. Okay, I need to define that because from there I need to know how much the I need to know how much the curve of the denture sphere, as they call it, you know, know how far that goes back. <clears throat> so, cool. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I totally could move this little head I have on the wall and it would be a perfect position. <laughs> oh yeah. For sure. Okay. Cause this is like the toughest part for me anyway, is finding this, uh, well, it helps if you find the, the, the jawline, splitting it and then finding your jawline down here and then finding it on the other end. So now you know where the other jaw should be. And then that kind of helps you find where in general, where your, your neck kind of connects. All this is really uh, kind of tough for a beginning artist. Like I, when I when I was figuring this all out, even now it's tough. I'm gonna like lie to you guys. This is pretty tough to get right off the bat. Okay, so but knowing perspective is good. And that's what we're doing here. So nose is here somewhere. So that's where our ear is gonna be down here. Should be. Yeah, something like this. Even though he's got hair, you're not going to see it. Um, that's where we're going to put it. Um, anybody who's in the chat and want to know about Star Circuit, let me know. I'd, I can keep talking about what I'm doing drawing-wise, but... I feel like...
feel like talking about Star Circuit is more. I don't know. I don't know if it's more interesting because like, it's still like my own IP and nobody knows, <clears throat> not many people know a ton of what's happening with Star Circuit, but I guarantee, you know, as I do more books, it'll be more, because uh, like the first book wasn't giving out tons of information, kind of left you off like at a cliffhanger, like a lot of books do. Um, but I want you guys to see more of what's happening. Mm. Yes. I don't know why my there we go sometimes my brush gets way too big and I can't get the fine detail I want okay so over here we have our center line maybe a little too much so this is how you kind of draw also mouths because then now you know this little curve is there and you might have like made it flat and that's how you make a crappy mouth but when you have the round feel of the the lips here which maybe it's a little too low <clears throat> so let's see here I always draw this like little chin strappy thing and the mouth looks like it should be a little higher so let's go a little higher with it Okay. And as we know, nostril and everything lines up. Those should line up. Okay. When you're looking up something, the, the, the upper lip is kind of the thing that should show the most. Even if they have a small, this guy has a really small kind of upper lip. So we'll have to mess with it a lot, but it's generally there. And that's where we start, we start with the general. <laughs> no worries. Thanks for thanks for hanging out. It's nice to uh, nice to get your opinion on things, and everybody here that gave their opinions on covers. I like to see because I got my own. Obviously, I like the hand version of the cover. I know that's. I just know that's not what everybody likes in in covers. Because I feel like the most tried and true is doing the in-your-face action ones that are just like dynamic. Um, I like the ones that are kind of posed, real cool. Um, and in this case, the the creator wants um, wanted one where it's kind of intimate with the main character, I'd say, and showing what's going on there. All right. Go, let's bring this in. Usually I don't use the hard eraser because I like, I'd rather redraw than like chisel out things with your eraser. I'd rather like do that and then, because you just get more of the natural flow when you do it that way. There we go. Maybe something more like that. <clears throat> cool I really like how I, I transformed my style into like how I'm drawing ears in this in this book they're very they're like a good mix like I don't know if you've seen uh, Capullo's ears maybe I can pull that up <clears throat> let me see if there's an easy example of that um probably should just look up you know one of his uh if i just do capullo art i'm sure there'll be a portrait where we can see an ear um, i know a lot of it will be batman which is and spawn which is no ear no ears in sight but there will be one with an ear somewhere I know there will be eventually. <laughs> okay, there's one. But it's blurry. Damn. Where's an example?
I guess that's what happened. I got to put in something in particular, I guess. But I really like how he draws uh, ears. There we go. Got one. Almost the same angle, too. But I, I obviously would draw from him a little bit. I think everybody does. <clears throat> So, here's one of Capullo's pages from Batman, I believe. Court of Owls, I think. Maybe it says somewhere. Um, oh, no, in, go in. There we go. Can we zoom? There we go. I don't know if we can be able to zoom any more than that. There we go. Look at that. So, you can see his ears. They're kind of like simplified. And they have the right lines. Um, but they're definitely not like kind of showing every fold. And sometimes even goes more simplified than that. Um, I like Capullo because he's organic with like what he does. Because as you can see, it's like his hands here definitely not realistic. Like far from he's got a he's got this nice mix of like dark realism in shading, but the proportions are some sort of Pixar ish version of of anatomy. Uh, so really cool, really cool. I think that's why we all like him. Like, look at this dude. This is this dude's like a gesture down here. He's got like a barely a body at the bottom there. So cool to see with Capullo stuff. Let's switch back to my uh, my drawing. And so we're trying to do something like that. And I think in this book, that's what I was doing. And, and kind of I specifically went for. All right, so here we're going to push this forehead back because I think that's more appropriate. I mean, we're not going to see a lot of it because he's got a lot of hair. But to me, let's go this way. Probably just going to barely see the neck back there. Maybe a little too much forehead on this end. Hmm. Let's see. Go this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's right. You go meet up. All right. I'm gonna tell her. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> see ya. <clears throat> mm. All right. Yo, Padrino's here. Padrino, Padrino. I don't know why I, why I want to start singing Padrino. He's on the bed. Do you want him in here? No, whatever. Okay. Cloud, Cloud's always on the bed. I'm leave this open. All right. Good old puppy dog. All right. Uh, so let's move. Let's move. Uh, so this is an upshot. So yeah, the, I think the forehead's too high. Let's see here. One this way, one that way. Okay. So I don't know if you've seen uh, tutorials doing it this way, uh, but you do things like uh, for lips, a good way to do it is, especially in the front view, you draw like a bird, a bird-like shape, or maybe a bat. Uh, for lips, it's got this um, kind of uh, it, two lines that kind of mimic each other. Like, I'm going to do it just flowingly. And it kind of looks like bird wings at the end. You can see that. That's kind of how lips work in an exaggerated way. But um, trying to figure out a good way for that to match in this angle and get the right expression is, is tough. I think that's the hardest part about getting the mouth going. Let's see here. His lips look a little wide. Oop, don't want you. So we're just gonna shrink it a little bit. Um, definitely has enough of the kid shape because the kids kids have like this kind of more 
I'll probably round things out and I'll make it look. He's not a kid. He's like an adolescent. So he should have, you know, the chin and everything uh, that we want. So I'll race away a little bit and kind of get it more defined. My pen will work anyway. Uh, more defined look. And then this thing is off center. See, this is how we know. Without the center line, you don't know that you're off. And then you end up having skewed stuff. And that's what we all love to see in artwork is like a, uh, something that's really pushed to realism, but in their own way, you know? So, okay, let's see. I'm going to probably see definitely some of this side at the head. I don't know how much we're going to show because on the cover itself, it's going to be, <clears throat> I don't know, in general, a... A uh, small piece of the puzzle here, and I don't know how much you're gonna really see if I gotta put smoke or whatever covering stuff. But for now, this is the work part where we gotta figure this out. Uh, yeah, of course, dude. <clears throat> Jelly the lips knows uh, how to make them work. <laughs> how to <clears throat> really make them look um, lush is the word. Okay. Uh, this thing see this nose it when you when you figure out what to do with the nose here's another little trick anybody out there uh, I mean I'm not giving out like tons of crazy good <laughs> tricks or anything I'm just saying <clears throat> in general if you have your you know your setter line whatever uh, the nose just is it just is a triangle just a right angle almost or not a right angle but very close and you just can stick this little nose out in whatever direction it should go. And that kind of reminds you to, to remember that it should protrude out more than maybe what you think. And that's what's kind of happening here, I think. Let me look at He's got a, a buttonish type of nose, which still protrudes out, but doesn't like, it's not super pointy or anything. Um, but it's a good way to, to double check. That, that's something I always forget. Like a nose... When you look at it from the side, it does have that shape. You know what I mean? Like it, it should have that. And so when you put in perspective of where the lines are going, <clears throat> which are a little bit maybe more like this, uh, it should have that. Cool, cool. All right, so... Let's bring that up a little bit. Maybe a little too uh, fat <laughs> of a nose. We'll, we'll work with it, but I know it needs to go up a little higher, which is fine. All right, so let's do this bottom part and then we'll jump off because it's time. It's pretty much time. So finding this piece is kind of tough because you're, it's like uh, you're under the chin kind of connects down here at like a, a line-ish type of, it's almost like a little, just a little bit of a fold and then it goes back up, <clears throat> kind of wraps around and goes back up. So that's what we're trying to get. I think I always struggle with that. I think, man, I don't know how many people don't struggle with that, but uh, he's a kid, so we don't want to pronounce it too much. I mean, I think the, his shoulder uh, or traps will be uh, kind of going to trick you. I think we want him to have like a kiddish kind of face, but like the body we're going to really um, develop, I guess, to trick you into thinking he's more adolescent. And uh, Peter's here. Um, I saw you <laughs> comment uh, to other people, and I forgot to mention. Dude, good to have you on, dude. Thank you for the, the compliment, too. Looks like the cover concept looks good so far. Yeah, it's... <clears throat> I think it's going to work. Um, to me, it'll be all depending on how we sell the first part here. So we kind of pull that back. Probably needs to go up a little bit. Um, so... 
the main piece here. The fire, the I think which we're on off to a good start, I think, with all that. I think her with all that, I think it's got enough shape. Kind of breaks up the symmetry a little bit, which is cool. Oops. And uh, as long as the hand looks superb, it's gotta be the best looking hand ever. It being like, you know, a quarter of the page. It's gotta look good. So we have the next guy pretty much in this is the work that needs to happen. If you're like a, let's just say you're wanting to do your own book and you're like, oh, it's just fun to do comics. And you're wondering why maybe you don't get enough traction with your art. To me, there's, I have a list of things that <clears throat> you need to get right. And one of those things is pretty much getting anatomy right. Obviously, this is part of that. But to do the work, this is what is required is to draw something like this. And then on top of this, you draw the stuff that works. You know what I mean? So there's other things you want to do. I also have obviously color using sticking to some sort of theory that works. That's why they call it color theory because it's really subjective, but there is a cue that we have like our, our the visual spectrum we have um, and that we generally all have like kind of connect to each other in, in different ways. And so picking one that works and sticking to it when you do color it, if you're doing that part, is good. Like I said, I mentioned anatomy, uh, shading with, I feel like, um, something that really delineates the forms is going to work. Like it, it makes you read it in a second. And, uh, one that I don't really do is, uh, differentiate materials enough. Like if you're doing, you shouldn't color everything like it's Chrome. You know what I mean? You shouldn't color I, that's why I have a sometimes problems with comic book coloring. They kind of give highlights on everything as if it's a shiny metal. Um, and that's just my approach. I don't really like how everything looks like a shiny metal. But I also maybe should use more shiny metal stuff when I when it's needed. And so the material separation is one thing that you can help with your stuff. And uh, the last two are really come with comic books it's probably the part you already have down which is your hook which is like oh why did you want to make the comic in the first place that's your hook you know for for this it's the guy holding a fireball but so we already have what's the hook um and the last thing is just making it clean uh it doesn't have to be even sketchy lines can be clean in a way like there's a way to use sketchy line like let's just for example um pull that back and pull this up. This is kind of an example of sketchy, but clean. Like it's very sketchy, but you, everything's clear. And I maybe that's the better word, clear lines. Um, and so, yeah, we're on our way. Thank you for joining me because this has been fun. I, uh, I'll i be working on this. I've got tons of other things. Plus, I, who knows, I'm getting, my voice sounds like I'm getting sick, but you never know with my, with my life. Uh, so... <laughs> I probably have got some other stuff to do, but I will be working on this hardcore because this thing needs to get out. This book is done. I do the cover. We kind of figure out what we're going to do with the campaign. I'm sure he's going to crowdfund it after seeing success from other people. Um, you guys will be able to probably get this book. I, I mean, I think I'm going to probably guaranteed this year unless the writer wants to push it off for some reason, but this will probably be a 2022 book. So get ready for that. That'll be fun. Um, also, Star Circuit we talked about. Star Circuit's killing it. Um, it, it, it. It's like something that I didn't see coming that the book would be... Uh, I don't want to say... I hate saying success, but it's for me, it's definitely a success. So, because uh, it's all... Um, how would you say? Uh, subjective, yeah. So, but nearing 20K, and I think that's for me a high, high success. I didn't think it was going to get that high. Um we only have a few of the main covers left, so go check that out. Um, I'm, like I said, working on chapter two, and it is triple the size of this book. So do not be afraid uh, or wary. The The next chapter with all its goodies are, will be coming. It's going to be... Um, <clears throat> now, depending on what happens, I may bring on another colorist to help. I don't know. Um, I really like what I'm doing. If I can find a colorist that can match what I'm doing... I probably will do a part of it and then have them do the finishes or something. 
Um, Cause I think that's been the struggle to like get a colorist to interpret my line work in the way that I think it should. Cause a lot of times it's sketchy. I don't have it inked. So if it's not as clear, like all this stuff in the background, like are they going to really pick out like what all these things are, you know, um, if you don't have the, the colors like to help. Um, so that may be a thing where I get another colorist to help out. Otherwise this book may take forever to bring to life. Um, anyway, uh, that's where we're at. We're moving into layouts. I'll be looking into maybe find, finding the colors. I already use a flatter, so that's a thing that I didn't use in the first book. Um, so that's great. That's going to save time. I will be hiring out every other job besides like campaigning. Like I've already learned, like pre-press, hiring it out. Uh, letter, hiring it out. Editor, hiring it out. Uh, copy editor, hiring it out. Um, anything I can carpent, like the trailer, I want to compartmentalize and the song maybe separate from the other. I want to get it out as efficiently as possible. And so it's all going to, uh, I think, be smoother because I just, this is the stuff I didn't know the first time around. So it's uh, awesome to have. It's just awesome to have that uh, forewarning or, you know, like be in the headspace that you know it's going to be coming. Um foreshadowing for yourself, I guess. Uh, Peter says, I've had assistants for inking. It's work to work with them. Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. And I know, but that's the problem. Like if I go get a colorist and just have them do it, it's, I think it's going to be impossible. There's no way he's going to match the colors and match what I want to do. Most colorists do not like doing the work of the background. Like just don't. Like they, they do a little bit. They'll do what is enough. But my whole what makes Start Circuit special is that we do care about what's in the background. Like most colors would not put in what's back here. Maybe, maybe this shot they might have, but like back here they might not have cared to put in the AR stuff or like really given the the background. It's just you know, it's justice. Um, and from me trying to look before for a colorist, that's what's happened. Previously, I've looked and it didn't work out for that reason. So I think somebody that maybe I do the basics, I do the, I do the, <clears throat> maybe the shadow layer or something. I don't, I don't know how it's going to work, but we'll I'll have to find somebody that can work with me and I'll, you know, pay him a, a half price to do just some polish and other things. Um, anyway, you've got recommendations for that. You know, colorists that are on the up and up and need work. Shoot them, uh, get them to shoot me a DM and I'll be looking into their work, see if they can mimic what I do uh, on some level. So that'd be great. Uh, that's it. That's it for Cup of Joe stream. I know we went a little over, but we had a lot to talk about. So glad to, you know, jump on stream today. Uh, that's about all I have, there's no other news. I'll see you guys Wednesday. We have Art Bros. We'll probably have our guest. Um, and I think we're booked for a little while too after that. So Art Bros is getting some more guests. Be aware. Be ready. And uh, yeah, look out for all the cool things that are coming. I've got I've got some cool art that are going in different little spots around uh, in other projects. So look out for my name. Look out, look out for my art. Um, and yeah, Backstar Circuit. If you... If you want to push, if you want to be the hero that pushes us to 20K, you know, just spread the word or, you know, tell a friend that really likes Cyberpunk and we can get this thing above 20K uh, and then we'll be selling it on my website uh, exclusively. But yeah, this is the last time to get the last, uh, get the main cover and all the stretch goals. So um, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for, uh, yeah, pushing Star Circuit as much as it has in the last year. I really appreciate it. Peace out, guys. I'll see you guys Wednesday.